Hello, and welcome to Blackwatch International. My name is Mintberry Buddha, and in this training video, we will be looking at explosives. Explosive devices are most commonly encountered in one of two ways. Firstly, when deployed to destroy enemy assets, and secondly, when used to deny areas to an opposing force. In this video, we will firstly cover the types of explosives and trigger methods used in operations. Secondly, we will look at how to plant explosives, as well as how to pick the most effective locations. Finally, we will look at how to approach and defuse explosive devices. The explosive devices encountered in operations can be divided, roughly, into three categories. Controlled explosives, mines, and improvised explosive devices. Controlled explosives are used to destroy equipment or vehicles. They come in the form of chargers or larger satchels and are triggered either manually or by a timer. Mines are area denial devices and come with various charge sizes and trigger methods depending on their intended role. For example, the M57 anti-vehicle mine and the APAS bounding anti-personnel mine, whilst varying in payload, are both buried underground and pressure triggered. Others, like the M6 SLAM, might be above ground and triggered by an IR sensor. Finally, improvised explosive devices are employed by guerrilla and militia level forces. They are concealed as everyday objects, often by roadsides, and may be triggered by a proximity sensor or by a triggerman using a remote clacker, such as a mobile phone. There are three trigger types, clacker, proximity, and timer. Clackers are manual triggers, allowing the user to decide exactly when to set off the explosive. Clackers will have a limited detonating range, which needs to be taken into account. As a side grade to conventional clackers, low-tech forces may use mobile phones to detonate improvised explosives. The user will have a number that they call on the phone to trigger the device. Timers, as the name implies, allow the operator to set a countdown on the device. These afford much less control over detonation than a clacker, and as such should be used only when friendly forces are either already at a safe distance or are guaranteed to be clear of the area in time. Timers do not suffer the range limit of clackers, however, allowing for detonations at further distances. Proximity triggers fall broadly into three subcategories, sensors, pressure plates, and trip wires. These allow for the explosives to be triggered when a vehicle or person passes over or near the device. Pressure plates are commonplace on both anti-personnel and anti-vehicle mines, and are activated when a person or vehicle places weight on them. Trip wires are low-tech, crude and visible, requiring a person to snag the wire to detonate the device. Proximity sensors are used on some modern mines and operate like a high-tech, invisible tripwire. They trigger when an invisible beam of light is interrupted by an object moving past it, such as an unknowing soldier. Placing an explosive device is quite simple. In the ACE self-interaction menu, select the Explosives tab and then the device to be placed. The device can then be rotated before placing. Alternatively, you can attach controlled charges directly to vehicles and select other objects, such as static gun positions. This is done by using the interaction menu when adjacent to the target object and using the attach item tab. Once the explosive is positioned, interacting with it will allow you to select a trigger method. Diffusal of an explosive device occurs once a hostile mine or suspicious object is identified. Before committing to diffusing the object, consider the following questions. Does the explosive threaten friendly or civilian personnel, equipment or buildings? Does the device block progress towards an objective, or can it be circumnavigated by use of an alternative route? If the device poses no threat to civilian or friendly personnel, roads or property, and the platoon is tasked with a time-sensitive objective, it may be prudent to find an alternative route and leave the device. However, consider that the enemy may have deliberately placed the device in order to force you onto a more dangerous route, or to force you towards a secondary device. If there is no sensible action other than to neutralize the device, then friendly forces must take three steps. Step one, friendly ground forces should secure the area around the object. This means creating a safe path to the object so that an EOD specialist can approach, as well as maintaining security on the flanks for as long as is required. As previously mentioned, IEDs may be watched over by hostile triggermen, waiting for forces to get close to the device before detonating. As a security element, you should be on the lookout for suspicious individuals playing this role. Ensure that friendly elements are not getting too close when creating the perimeter. 
A good guideline is to maintain a minimum of 50 meters distance to the device at all times. Step two. With the area being secured, immediately radio in the device location, as well as marking it on your map. Be sure that friendly units are made aware. Step three. With the threat identified and flank security established, the EOD is safe to approach the object. Before getting anywhere near the threat, the EOD should use the self-interact menu to activate their mind detector and connect their headphones. Once this is done, the EOD should point their detector towards the threat and approach slowly. The detector will beep audibly when either an active or deactivated explosive is in front of it. The beeps will increase in frequency as the EOD approaches the explosive. It is necessary to approach the object prone and as slowly as possible to mitigate the chance of a sensor or pressure triggered detonation. Once the EOD has a good idea on the location of the explosive device, they can attempt to use the interaction menu to locate and defuse it. If interaction with the device is not possible, they can attempt crawling closer in small increments until the interaction appears. Once the defusal option appears, the EOD can defuse the device, leaving it deactivated. Do note, however, that a deactivated device will still trigger beeping on the detector. Alternatively, the EOD may elect to dispose of the device by means of controlled explosion. This option may be taken only when detonating the device does not threaten friendly or civilian personnel or property. Placing an explosive charge in close proximity of the device and then evacuating friendly units will allow the EOD to destroy the object without having to hazard direct contact with it. The explosive charge employed by the EOD should be triggered preferably with a clacker or, if not possible, with a timer in order to ensure maximal control over the detonation whilst friendly personnel and equipment is evacuated. Now you have a comprehensive understanding of how explosives are used and diffused in Blackwatch operations. This knowledge will not only prepare you for engineering roles, but will also help you identify threats as any member of the platoon. Thank you for watching this video on explosives. If this video is useful, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe for more Armour 3 content and check out our website for more information on Blackwatch International.